Lace Dampers, it's Gainer again and a lovely friend of mine sent me a link the other day uh, off the lovely Fiona and she said have you thought of doing one of these and I looked at the video and it looked absolutely amazing um, but it uses 12 by 12 paper I made my first one which I'll show you in a moment out of 12 by 12 paper because I found some old stuff in the drawer. It's retired. This is Pigaboo Peach. But I thought that's not fair though on those who haven't got 12 by 12 paper. Um, I'm afraid you will need a piece. I'm going to use Balmy Blue. You'll need this at 11 and 5 eighths. So you're taking just an eighth of an inch off because this is 11 and 3 quarters. If you're American, I'm going to try and work this out now because yours is 11 and a half. So you would need to take one, 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 two, three. So you would need to get, take yours down to 11 and three eighths. And we're going to score at, at three and seven eighths. You would score at three and three quarters. That way you would get the same result as well. So that's only fair. You can do it with 12 by 12 and score at 4 and 8. You can do it with 11 and 3 quarters and score at 3 and 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. Uh, and another 3 and 7 eighths. Or just 3 and 7 eighths and flip. And if you're American, you want it at 11 and 3 eighths. Uh, oh, let me work that out now. 3 and 3 quarters. 1, 2, 3 and 3 quarters. 1, 2, 3 and three quarters so you want 11 and a quarter and you would score at three and three quarters spin and three and three quarters that way you can get out of american a4 uk a european a4 and 12 by 12 so you've got three different sizes now so the first one i did like i'm saying i did out of 12 by 12 and scored at four and eight this i've cut down to 11 and five eighths so I'm going to score at three and seven eighths spin it round and then three and seven eighths that way each panel will be three and seven eighths three and seven eighths and three and seven eighths if you're American you like I'm saying you want at eleven and a quarter and score at three and three quarters rotate three and three quarters and each panel should be three and three quarters I'm leaving mine at Five and I'm going to take this down another inch, a uh, quarter of an inch actually. I'm going to score this at five and three quarters. So you want it by five and three quarters also. So I'm going to take this edge off because I've just changed my blade and it's starting to fray. So I'm going to take this down to five and three quarters, and now I've got a perfectly straight edge with no fraying. So, that's our card cut to size. I just wanted to explain. So I'm going to show you this. And it's called a mini Miura, fo Miura fold card. It's spelled M-I-U-R-A. And the lady whose video Fiona sent me was by the lovely Rachel Tessman. But she had it off another lady on a site on YouTube called Fold Factory. So, this is the card. It's absolutely beautiful and I've used those beautiful papers my lovely friend Gloria sent me. And this is a real, you can, I love fun fold cards and this for me is magical. So, and look, this is your card opening up. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? I absolutely adore it. I do, you don't have to put um, designer series paper everywhere. I just chose to do so just think it's absolutely divine I followed Rachel's instructions about cutting this piece down um, but I thought well if I'm taking if it's already cut by an eighth of an inch all round so that's why I didn't do it on this side I trimmed that down like Rachel said and look I got a massive gap there I don't particularly like that so what I did when I cut this piece down I just spun it around and glued it on and I've got that perfect tiny little border all the way around for there so you can see that I've cut it there same as Rachel did um, but I left it as it was there the thing I had to do the most was 
when I cut this to the size, because this is five and a half um, by 12, so, but you can still get the same results, look, and you can have stuff hanging over the, the edge here and here, because it all tucks and folds away, so you can't see it, and the belly band, I think, just sets the whole card off, and gives it a purpose, it keeps the card closed for one, and it also looks really, really pretty. Absolutely fabulous. And it's so simple. So I'm going to show you one more time. This absolutely gorgeous card. How beautiful is that? Look at that fold. I don't know how it would stand up uh, for the recipient. Unless they propped the belly band under the back somewhere. But uh, it's a weird one to stand up. There you go. Use your belly band. Make it stand up. Let me pull that over a bit. So you just tuck, tell your recipient, tuck your belly band under the back. And there you go, it stands up. Yay! <laughs> but isn't that gorgeous? And I used the Make-A-Wish from the... Life is Grand stamp set. You could put Hello Friend, Make a Wish, Life is Grand with you. Or you could just put Sending Lots of Love Your Way. You know, you've got the birthday one. I just picked, I just threw this one together as, an, as a sample. So I just used off cuts of butterflies. On this one we're going to do it properly and beautifully. But isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. I love it. And yeah, a mini Miora card. Isn't that beautiful. So Rachel adapted her piece because the lady from uh, Fold Factory, hers was eight and a, eight and three quarters, I think, or eight by a 13 and a half inches. And it was just a huge big piece and there was extra folds. So the lovely Rachel modified this. So I'm just going to make sure it's modified down again just so we can get all our measurements out of it together all three all three sizes of cardstock so in with your score you're going to pop this in and i'm going to score push it right in the corner three and seven eighths i know three and seven eighths and three and seven eighths is uh seven and three quarters but i'm just going to show you just turn your card over in fact, turn it over and flip it because you're going to be scoring. One's going to fold one way, one's going to fold the other and score at three and seven eighths. And where's my ruler? We have three and seven eighths. We have three and seven eighths. And we have three and seven eighths. So, it, like you say, if you've got an American paper, you want it 11 and, three quarter, 11 and a quarter, 3 and 3 quarters, 3 and 3 quarters, and 3 and 3 quarters. Perfect. So, we're going to keep hold of the score tool. We're going to need our ruler again. And I'm just going to measure down 2 inches. And I'm going to put a tiny little pencil mark right there. And then we're going to measure two inches on this line and put a pencil mark right there. That's all we're going to do. Then you're going to grab your ruler again <laughs> and I'm going, to, I'm going to use my little scorer and you're going to score right to that corner. Nice... Uh, Nice deep groove, and then you're gonna you're gonna do it to this score line. So you're going from the this fit, the top corner to the first score line, from that first score line to the second score line corner. Now I'm just making sure I can see that there, and I'm gonna score that to there. And then we're gonna do exactly the same here. We're gonna score from this corner to there, and from that corner to there. So 
all about maths when you're readjusting things. And if you're good at maths, you be bob on. So I'm going to go from there to this corner. And I didn't quite catch the corner. Perfect. So there are your score lines. Now you can fold. Which way am I having? That's it. You can fold this one over now like this. And this one over like that. And once you've done that, you fold them together and you bend your score lines either way. Not too wickedly. Just so you can fold them backwards and then this one you close it up and you fold them just either way so this will go back and this will come forward <laughs> you might pop there we go pop that way see that's it does fold, trust me. Let's put things down. So that'll fold that way. That will fold that way. Making sure they are corner to corner. And then give it a good burnishing. So I'll turn them over. Give them a good burnish. I'm just going to open them up. Just gonna burnish those score line and then take it back and burnish those. So there's that simple fold. But look at that. Isn't that fabulous? You might get a bit of pinching because you need them to be right in the corner. That one's perfect, look, beautiful. But look at that. How wonderful. Look at, I love that. And the thing is, like I say, we're going to make a belly band. Oh, and by the way, whatever your length of your card, you need a piece that's half an inch. Oh, look at this. Look, it's spraying. But I want to turn that around so you can't see it. So you're going to need a piece that's half an inch by whatever length your card is because we're going to wrap that round. That matter as long as it comes all the way around you're gonna just basically pinch that round your card not too tight hastened otherwise you may not but that's perfect and then we're gonna have that end coming across there so it all ties up down this one side. You don't want a gap here and then a gap here because of the slit. You want to keep it nice and close to that edge. So you're going to make that belly band as well. I'm going to test it first before I actually... That's a little bit too tight for me. You need it so you can take it, your card in and out. So I'm going to push that. I'm going to pull that just a little bit. Fold that over gently. Make sure I've got a little bit of overhang there. And then manipulate this. That, I'm going to make sure it goes to the, right to the end now as well. And I've got a little bit of pinch space either side. Because we could, oh that's better. That's loads better. So if you can manipulate your card so this end closes up this end, perfect. So I'm just going to make the belly band quickly. And I can get my pin out. We're going to once this is on, we're going to remove it though, so we can continue with the rest of our card. But how simple was that? I'm going to line that up. Give 
that second to a deer down. We'll decorate the band as well shortly. And I know that's going to go on and off perfect. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Beautiful. I love it. So I'm going to pop my glue away a minute. Now, my friend Gloria, who was absolutely wonderful, gifted me these papers. She also gifted me these papers. And if you can see that, there is a pattern on here. So we're going to do a bit of sponging. I'm going to pop my tool away. I have pulled in my Barbie blue. I'm going to get a dauber. Fingers crossed I find one that's relatively... I've got an old piece here so I'm just going to grab my tissue and I'm just going to give this a wipe. Make sure it's, it's got a bit of old uh, ink on but I'm just going to get as much off as I can. It's an old one that's retired so I should just get some more daubers really but I haven't got any. I'm going to grab my dry cloth now and just give that Perfect, it's not coming off much. So I'm going to open my ink. Grab some scraps. And you want to see the pattern on this paper. It's definitely one of those you rub on. So. Oh, look at that, and it's got butterflies on it. Love it. Thank you, Gloria. You are a star. So I'm going to add ink all over there. I might even give it like an ombre effect. You know, start off dark, work my way down light. But how wonderful is that paper? Oh, you could have used your brayer as well. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that pattern being undiscovered. Oh, being discovered, should I say. Uncovered. <laughs> Tongue tied and twisted. And I don't care that it's not all the same colour. You know, it's not got to be that tone right the way. It's just adding some beautiful colour so we can reveal that beautiful image underneath. It's just divine. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, just absolutely stunning. Thank you, Gloria, for these. And there was two pieces. I'm going to cut these to size as well. And I'll show you how we're going to cut them up as well. That is just, and then what you do, you just take your Swiffer cloth and then you're going to buff your white up again to take the ink off. Look at that coming out now. Just divine. How wonderful is that? Look at that paper. Oh, I, I like these white patches in it. It's beautiful. Again, just going to get some. I don't care if I get dark bits or light bits. Or... Just divine. Oh, absolutely gorgeous.
Oh, it's just absolutely wonderful. Oh, it breaks your arm. <laughs> and the arm's aching like crazy. So that's my choice. I should have fetched the brayer out. Just gorgeous. Nearly done. And you can emphasize just some of these butterflies just by adding just a bit darker on there. Oh, it's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Just going over those butterflies. And I'm going to go back and do that on those pieces as well. Oh, love it. Gloria, you are a little superstar, my darling. Thank you so much. That is just divine. Whoops. Nearly done. A bit more there. Absolutely wonderful. We'll wipe that off again in a moment. We'll just get some more of these done. Oh, I love it. Oh, so pretty. You could add extra colour if you could have gone on over the, the butterflies with a different colour, but I think just darkening them will emphasise them just as much as we need them. I love them, so pretty. I'll have to re-ink my balmy blue. <laughs> Little one there, it's a beautiful one here. The peaking over there. It's beautiful. That's enough for the darber. I'm just going to get this and buff it up. Absolutely gorgeous. I just hope I don't mess it all up now. Just buffing up the white. just gorgeous. So while this is open, our ink, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm not going to add the white to the centre of my card, I'm just going to add that sentiment straight down into the centre of the card in the balmy blue. Look, I put, started putting lines on uh, my blocks. Perfect. Isn't that lovely? Make a wish. Oh, we, we can go over that later once it's dried up a little bit with our Wink of Stella. I've not used Wink of Stella for ages. So we're going to go over that. So, beautiful. We're going to fetch our trimmer back in. I'm just going to add my butterfly punch to there to keep that card weighted down a minute. And our card is five and three quarters by three and seven eighths. So I'm going to take this down to five and five eighths. Oh, I hate cutting that off. Lovely little strips there. 
Oh, you could even decorate the front of this belly band. Oh, I might do that, actually. I'm going to take both pieces. I've got them both together. And these are going to go in at three and three quarters. I can save those for another project. We're going to use our trimmer again in a moment. That beautiful. They're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And now we are, because, where's my ruler? Again, there it is. Excuse me for sniffing. So these are five and five eighths. We need to come, oh, and our gap down is two inches. So we need to come down by three and seven eighths. Make another little mark. And then we're going to cut that off to the corner. You can do it with scissors all in one go. Or you can use your trimmer. I just lost my pencil. I don't trust myself with scissors. <laughs> so... I'm going to grab my guillotine this time. Oh, right. Don't cut the two pieces like that. We need to... Wait there now. There's a way to do in this. So, I think if I cut that one that way, if I cut that one that way and spin it upside down, I should. Oh, let me just do one at first. We can always... Uh, figure out how we're going to do that. So I'll put in my little mark on the guillotine and the corner. Perfect. So that will fit in there with that tiny... Well, see, you, just because I've got that little butt, I'm going to take a fraction, and I mean a fraction, off the bottom. So... A, about a sixteenth just off the very bottom now it will fit on there beautifully I've just got a little mark there so I'm going to use my scissors to get that lap it must be because the ink is still wet so let me just see if I can line that up there we go, I got it. Perfect. So this is going here. Oh, now it looks lock codded. I'm just going to take another skin. That doesn't seem to be straight, that's what it is. That's better. That's got it. You can just play around now until you get your bottom perfect and your top. That's better because you need that to be straight here. Look at me all the way. You need that straight. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So now for the inner piece. This is going to go on that top flap as well. Just there. So I'm literally, off this top edge, I'm going to take a tiny little slither again. And I mean a tiny, tiny slither. It was barely a line. So that will then fit up there perfectly. Gorgeous. Right, now for my second piece. There it is. Oh, it's, no, it's not directional, so it doesn't really matter. So, again, I'm going to mark down one and seven eighths. I did it from that side, this, and doing it from this side on the other. So, one and seven eighths. Just there. And then I'm going to go from that corner. Yeah, you just have to swap corners. And 
then it's going to spin around on that side. And again, if we need to be, we need to take it just a little fraction off the end, keeping a card straight. And I know it should do. Perfect. Look at that. Nice little gap all the way around. Perfect. And for this little piece, which is going to attach here, I'm not going to do anything on that one. Look at that. It's absolutely perfect. So there we go with our guillotine. We've literally taken fragments off, that's all. But it's best to take a little bit at a time than take too much. I love it. And that pattern is following on. Oh, I love it. So we're going to get some gluing done. Make sure you get some glue right at the end. Just want it so it gives a little border and you can still it's not interrupting with that score line so then you 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 know where this pattern follows from you can see where it's meant to be so I just glue according to this now but you can have a little play with your guillotine or your trimmer or your scissors even just take a little tiny bit off at a time just do some slight adjustments. Every suit needs adjusting to, to the person's card. So you could treat this like a man's suit and tailor it to your own needs. I think that is beautiful. Oh, look at that, how gorgeous. So. Our other pieces now can get glued on. I can pick it up. It's just had a lot of ink on there, so you can dry it with the heat tool if you want, but I'm just going to leave it on my card to slowly dry. I'm loving the balmy blue. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to have a bit more on there in a minute, which I've uh, forgot to fetch over. But because it's direction, no, it's not direction, it's patterned. So you're going to need to line this up. With, so your pattern looks continuous. Oh, I love that. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So give me two seconds. My lamp is moving. There we go. I'll be back in a flash. I have this beautiful glitter paper. I just realised how beautiful that is going to look. So I'm going to cut this to three and seven eighths. another card and I'm uh, going to mark down one and seven eighths off here one seven eighths there and one and seven eighths there and I'm going to get those two top pieces then Piece, the corner, and to there, and then that piece to that corner, all 
Oh, isn't that beautiful? That could have gone in the middle, but it's that. Oh no, it's the wrong, it would have been the wrong way round. It will go on. Oh. I worked it out last night anyway, but it, it's not going to go. But these will now, or they should. No, I've got it the wrong way. I've done it wrong. <laughs> Why isn't that working out right? That should be straight. Oh, I know what I've done. I've done it the opposite way. Right, so I'm just going to slice them across there and they should be right. So straight line on that edge. And then a straight line on that edge. Let's try those two pieces. <laughs> I've done a boo boo. No, I've still done it wrong, haven't I? It's really no testing my patience now. They should go. They should be straight. <laughs> oh well, never mind. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it worked fine on my other piece of card. Look here. Look on this one. I actually got those pieces in perfectly as well. So what happened? What happened indeed? We're going to fit that side. I don't know in the slightest what I've done wrong. Gosh. I don't know what I've done there, ladies and gents. I can perhaps try one more time and cut from there down. Right, I need that to be two inches. So let's get this to our sausage, don't you worry. So two inches. Right, I need that piece to go from there down. So if I cut there now, edge to edge, now they should be right. Yay! Needs to be trimmed off a little bit more, it needs to, because these were two inches. So oh, I'm going to take it an eighth of an inch off either end. So I'm going to push that in at three and seven eighths, or yeah, three and seven eighths. Test that there. A fraction more. I'll take that down to three and a half. Uh, three and yeah, I need to take a quarter of an inch off, don't I? Let's take a quarter of an inch off here as well. So that is three and seven eighths. So take it down to three and five eighths. I'm going to save those corners because I'll do something with those, even if it's cut butterflies out of them. So that now will go there, and that one will go there. Yes! <laughs> we got there in the end. Bless my soul. A job's worth doing, it's worth doing right, isn't it? A nice little board all the way around. Same with this one, and we've got pure decoration going on now. Beautiful. Just give that little bit of sparkle. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So 
Ta-da! Now we can add some butterflies and some decoration. I'm just going to pop that on there so I don't lose it. For a moment, I am going to pop away my ink for a second. <coughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Beautiful. So I'm just going to let that rest on there. So this is our belly band. This is the end, which is going to stay on this side of the card. I could add a piece of this. Or, you know that, right, right, I've been cutting out butterflies and I don't know whether to colour them or not. But you can have these standing up now on your card flaps inside, anywhere. I've got a two small ones. Right, so what I did, I got my paper, using my snips, I just basically followed a line just around these because you need to cut close to the bottom so you can get your punch in. And the ones that were on the edge are the half ones. So what I did with the half ones is I cut the smaller ones out from the centres. That way I didn't waste that bit of paper. Let me just cut that off. So you know like these half ones that you're gonna, you couldn't get a full one? I would use the small butterfly punch in the centre, like on that one there, or say, let's say that one there because you can't get a full one. So you can utilise all of them. But I know I can get the three out of this, and because this has now got its tail, I can pop that in, line that up beautifully, and punch away. I will have to remove it now to get close to that other butterfly, but I've still got that one. And I'm going to chop some of it off by the looks of it. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is cut through the two. I've got plenty of butterflies, I'm just showing what I did. So I might have enough there to hold on to. Perfect. Got it stuck in there. There we go. It can go. And then this one, you can add a piece of paper. Um, just use a bit of snail. Touch, and then use it as like a little anchor. And then you can just peel that off the back then, if it wants to come off. There we go. So that's what I was doing with those. The little ones, I do need another one actually. So I'll show you what I did with one of these. I just, say it was a half of a butterfly, I just pop this in. Lined it up with the small bit and punched it out. So I do need another one. It's not a waste of one if you need it. And under my belly band, I just bent one up. You can play around with all these. You don't have to have butterflies. I just chose the butterflies because of the paper I was using. Line that up on there. 
I always use I use this to keep that in the centre. And then we can put rhinestones on there. Just add a little bit of bling to your belly band. Isn't that cute? Um, with your card now, you can have a little play. Because you can have these beautiful butterflies dangling off the edge. Let me show you one. Like this. You can bend its, its wings up. I know it'll get crushed whilst it's in the card. I just grab my pokey tool just to squash that down because it takes a little bit longer to dry on the glitter. And you could add a little one as well. Just there. You want it up a little bit so you don't see it. So when you close the card you can't see the butterflies. And then when you open it, there they are to surprise you. But you can also put them in here and here and tuck them in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add another big one. And this can go off the edge as well. I'm not going to glue. I'm just going to glue the top end. This one can go right here. I'm just going to press that down. going to take a little bit longer to go off because it is going on there. Uh... On the glitter. So watch this and then you want to be able to just fold them. So you don't want to poke them out straight away because that will fold inwards and fold up against. So Perfect. So you can't see any of the butterflies until you open up the card. And there they are. Aren't they gorgeous? So, I need one more little one. I'm going to put that one here on this side. Just absolutely gorgeous. Look at those. And then they all tuck away beautifully. And the space on the back to write your message. And the card is pale enough. You can slip on your belly band now. And there is your completed card. You could add a couple on the front as well if you wanted to. You know, it's entirely up to you. And maybe I didn't want to add the coloured ones for some, don't know why. But, you know, you could cut the small ones out of here. You know, use the butterfly in the image itself. And cut yourself up butterfly out it's just so pretty absolutely gorgeous but I'm going to do one more on here and I'm going to use this half one here because it's going to get wasted anyway because I just need one more little one I'm going to have an a little too small and a large on there. So just lining this up. And there it is. There we go. There's those bits I don't need. 
sorry it's a long winded one, but here goes. And I'm loving these black and white now against the blue. So I'm going to pop that one right there. And my little one. Is going right there. There we go. There is my card. Um, like I say, go over to Fold Factory. Lady there does a different fold of the week every week, apparently, but I've not seen anything on there that I would. I could change into a card as yet, I haven't finished looking <laughs> uh, or you can go over to uh, Rachel Tessman and she, see her version you could keep these little strips or you could have added them on there but I think it might have been a bit too much so I'm going to save all these wonderful bits to turn to panels on a different card and not have them go to waste and my butterflies that I've got spare oh look at that, I cut that i got loads in here but I'm going to pop them in there and they will go on another project also so I hope you enjoyed I hope you in, um, there's the other one I'll show you the two together now I hope you don't mind giving me a thumbs up and a share, that would be amazing um, yeah oh by the way, quick while we're here I go over to Cinder's Papercraft, my gorgeous, gorgeous friend who sends me the turnabout stamps. Um, she's absolutely wonderful. She's got some fabulous information, informational uh, uh, videos on there at the moment. And she's the one I got the tip off for putting lines on my blocks. And I do it underneath. What I did was I made sure my blocks were lined up perfectly on the bottom of here and then even the round ones I used I counted the squares and used a sharpie so I can get things bang on in the centre or for sentiments even this is what this is for so when I put a sentiment on there let me find a small one let's see if we can get this one on perfectly straight so, I would also line that up anyway, but I can now line that up. And now, when I stamp down, I know that's perfectly straight. Look at that. So, I can check from underneath, because if you don't get the labels straight, then you're not getting your wording straight. But this is a perfect, perfect way. Or even now, I can take that off. I'm going to line that up on a, one of these. I know that's perfectly square. And then I can make sure, or even there, I can line that up with that top row. And then I know it's perfectly straight when I come to stamp. So, yeah, go over and have a look at Cinder's. She's got some fabulous techniques and, and uh, hints and tips for getting things the way you want them. So, she's got two little videos. She's got a little tiny video and two information ones. Brilliant. Go over and give her some love. So, there's my mock-up one that I used, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So, I will... Uh, it's retired paper, so that's what it is. So, there's that one. And there's the one we've just done now. Absolutely beautiful. And then there's those gorgeous butterflies. Make a wish. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it. So there is a different type of fun fold card for you all. I adore my fun fold cards, as you all know. I used to do all fun fold cards. But there we have it. There they are. I hope you enjoy. I hope you give me a thumbs up and a share. Please don't forget to press subscribe and the little bell straight away. That way you'll be uh, notified of all future videos. And come and see us in the premieres as well. I love them. Between, there's one coming out on Saturday. Oh, yeah, you'd have watched it by then. So <laughs> thanks for watching anyway. And sorry for gabbling on. 
Love you all. Bye.